Hey everybody, this is Fei Wu from Face World Media, and in this video, I want to talk about Zoom webinar, but not just about how to set it up because that part is actually pretty trivial and simple. I want to talk about when you have to organize as a host with one panelist or multiple panelists across different continents and time zones, what do they need to know to join your webinar successfully as part of this video, as well as a blog post on faceworld.com to help you through all of that. So you don't have to rethink everything all over again, but of course your event may be very different than mine. So once you go through the list, make sure you add things that are important to your event setup and the people, your audience, as well as your panelists. So I hope you find this helpful and find these tips helpful. If you notice something that I left out, please make sure to leave in a comment below. I love to learn from you and I love this community to be able to learn from each other. Thank you so much. In this case, the scenario I'm giving is a bit extreme because I had to work with two hosts outside of myself, two hosts and five musicians. Out of the five musicians, there's one violinist, everybody else are pianists. So as you can imagine, just different instruments, people, and uh, a way of setting things up. And there was one calling, one musician calling in from Japan as well. And everybody else uh, was based in the US, but across different time zones, it was challenging but we put on a really good show. So I learned so much and I put up a blog article. If you would prefer reading it, please go ahead. But in this video, I'm going to give you those eight tips that I summarized and I'm able to kind of have this conversation with you guys. So tip number one, you need a prep call, sometimes two, especially if people are not able to join all at once, but you want have everybody join in. Now, let me be clear. This is not just for a gala or concerts or musicians. This is the case if you have multiple speakers for a Zoom webinar period. Even with just one other person, you know, we all need some preparation to make sure we're on the same page. People know how to use the device, that they have a proper microphone set up, they have sufficient Wi Fi at home, but there's so much more to it, which I'm going to cover in this video. Real quick on setting up Zoom webinar. It's actually quite simple. There's pretty much only one or two more concepts you need to know for a Zoom webinar. It's exactly the same as you're setting up a regular Zoom meeting, except now you have the hosts, uh, the meeting manager, right? And then you may have one or more panelists which are the people I'm referring to as musicians who need to perform from their homes. One thing we want to call out is that they're only performing one at a time, their own pieces. Now, Zoom will not work if you have multiple people singing, talking, or playing instruments at the same time. We talked about in other videos because Zoom only allows one audio channel activated at the same time. There are other ways to get around it. It's complex and that's not what this video is about. So you're working with the multiple panelists. Why are they called panelists? Because they need to speak, have their voices heard, and they might need to interact with each other as well with the hosts. Now you have something called uh, webinar participants. These people are calling in, registering for the event for free or for a paid fee, but they're in listening mode only. You can allow them to leave you links and chats and things like that, but they're unable to all of a sudden jump in, make a sound or play their instrument, right? They're just participating, listening. I'm going to give you the tips on are how you manage your panelists because when you have so many people, you really, you ought to be sure that everybody knows what they're doing. They need to be able to find all the basic buttons. So I have a separate video on how to join Zoom as a participant. Literally, they need to know how to turn on and off their videos, on and off their audios, how to connect as soon as they log in. Because the goal is to leverage the prep session to create as realistic as possible of an experience for everybody involved except for the participants and viewers. So step one for your prep session, schedule it. You can use Zoom, of course. I recommend that you set up, instead of a regular meeting, you set up a Zoom webinar. You add these folks as panelists. You wanna make sure everybody has already installed Zoom on their computers. Now just downloading to any machine. Think about the machine they're actually going to use with a webinar. Tip number two, pick a room. You may have participants with young children or everybody's in a very confined space these days, right? They need a room that's relatively quiet, predictable, and with the least amount of interruptions. In fact, you know, for the day of the webinar, they need to inform every single family member to make sure they're not interrupted. So pick the room and have the right setup. If I'm gonna fake that I'm playing the piano right now, you know, 
you want to have the setup to join the prep session exactly facing this way. What if your room is crowded and you are unable to put your large computer at a place that's sufficient to actually face the piano? That's when a webcam will come into play. Uh, if you have a webcam, which is highly recommended, you can put your webcam on a tripod, big or small. So, you know, you don't have to move with your computer. You simply have to move your webcam to be in the right place for that event. Tip number five, make sure your device is charged. If you are using a laptop, you know, or a desktop, it's charged great. Let's hope that you don't have a power outage. A lot of people don't realize that as a result of broadcasting live, especially if they're a musician who need to play a longer piece for extended period of time on Zoom, it actually exhausts their batteries faster than if they're making a phone call or doing mundane things like going through Facebook. So they need to make sure that their phone is fully charged at the beginning of the meeting. If not, they need an external charger that's reachable or they need to be near an outlet where they can easily charge their phone during the meeting. This is a huge thing. Number six, you want people during the prep session to test their internet speed. They can do that at any time, even before they hop on a prep call with you. That is huge go to speedtest.net and ask them to send you either a screenshot or sometimes they give you a link. Send that link to you so that they understand at home what their upload and download rates are. Now, again, for Zoom, especially if you are joining as a participant playing music, then you want to have better internet speed for sure. A minimum of three uh, Mbps for upload. Try with a microphone. Now, uh, for a lot of people who are podcasters, broadcasters, and musicians, they most likely will have some sort of microphone, external microphone, not just the one that's built into their computer or phone. So you want to test that out just because you don't really know exactly what position they're going to be in. When people are playing an instrument, that setup is a lot different than when they're just taking a regular Zoom call. So whatever device in general they're going to use, including a microphone, you want to test that out during your prep call to make sure the distance is right, that in fact it is working correctly. You might ask people to change the volume up or down, just like what my producer Herman and I did for this new device, which is called the Rode Go Mic. You know, I had to adjust the volume that I have on this device as well as my recording volume on my camera. So little things uh, makes a huge difference. I hope you find this video helpful. And before you go, I want to say just a few more things about miking your instrument. Now, depending on the instrument, this can get pretty tricky. One thing you want to do is that you want to set up a Zoom test call, maybe with a friend, so that person can use an emoji to let you know how well he or she is hearing you. Of course, you can also log into Zoom and pretend that it's a prep session on your own, and you can hit that record button and just record a local test for yourself. Now, last but not least, you want to make sure to check out this video, as you can see in the upper right hand corner to make sure that you turn original sound on for Zoom. I have a separate video for that, so I want to make sure you see it. Best of luck and I'll see you in the next video.